We are in the second half of 1942 and so far our war against the Allies has been a massive success. Both the Czechoslovak and the Polish armies have surrendered and the Allied invasion of the USSR has been put down. The only two nations left in the east are Romania and Lithuania. But before we could attack them we first had to clear out the rest of Poland since a lot of French and British troops were still resisting our invasion. But not for long, soon we could turn our army and tanks to Lithuania where not many troops were waiting for us. So it wasn't difficult for us to break through and encircle the majority of their troops. After having captured Vilno, Kaunas and liberated Memel, the Lithuanian government surrendered. While not all forces capitulated immediately, none of them managed to flee since we had captured every port and so we forced them to give up arms. With the northeast now cleared we can turn to Romania. Our Bulgarian allies have already made great progress like crossing the Transylvanian mountains and attacking attacking Bucharest. Additionally, the Soviets are on their way to start their counter-offensive to liberate Ukraine. So despite big allied presence, this won't be a difficult battle. While half our tanks drove to Hungary, the rest assisted in an offensive in the north. While we first had to capture Stanislavov, we had soon reached the Romanian border, and with no defenses in sight, our tanks spread out and drove south. After some days we had arrived to Bulgaria and split Romania in two. Shortly thereafter we assisted our allies offensive in Bucharest and since the city was encircled it wasn't a difficult battle. So with their capital captured the Romanians surrendered and we have cleared out the allies from the east. But before we could turn to the west we first met with Soviet delegates to split up the east. Since most of our claims aren't conflicting it didn't take long to agree on a map. But since we are anti-communist nonetheless this map will definitely change in the future. We gave away all of eastern Poland and eastern Romania while we got the territories of a greater Lithuanian state and could establish a grand duchy there. Additionally Bulgaria and Hungary each got a big part of Romania. Finally it's time to liberate the Rhineland. Due to the French population being against the war they have had trouble to mobilize their army to its fullest extent. And with a disjointed government and a stagnating economy they aren't ready to face us. With our army and tanks already prepared we started our first offensive going along the Rhine. Starting from outside of Frankfurt our tanks managed to encircle some French divisions at the same time as liberating Essen. Sadly we never got an opportunity to cross the Rhine so instead we continued north to the Netherlands. Due to the terrain being friendly for our tanks we easily broke through and captured Arnhem and Utrecht. From there some of our tanks went north and encircled a large part of their border defenses while the other half attacked Amsterdam their capital. The city as well as The Hague was soon captured encircling another important part of their defenses. Lastly we cut down south into Brabant and as Rotterdam their last major city fell they surrendered leaving their allies in the lurch. But after this big win we have hit the wall or more exactly the Rhine river. Since despite having mutinies in their army the French have massively reinforced the river line stopping us from crossing it. However we have a plan to surpass these defenses going through Belgium. It will take some preparations but if we succeed we would open the road to northern France and Paris. While we waited our advanced airplanes which we had started to research a while back entered production. Fighters with the goal to contest allied air superiority and naval bombers to contest their navy. But you shouldn't expect much from them. The British have probably more than double the amount of factories than we have on airplanes and have already a massive air force. Regarding our army 10 more tank divisions were deployed and sent to assist the Belgian invasion. Additionally during the East in the Eastern conflict we had modernized parts of the army to make it even more mobile. We are now ready to invade Belgium but before we started our operation the British tried to naval invade Hamburg. Sadly for them our defenses held them back and we could even let 7 divisions land and capture them with our tanks. With Hamburg secured let's finally drive to Brussels and surprise the French so much that they have no choice but to surrender.
The French have surrendered and all the American troops present in the country are surrounded, with all our enemies except the Greeks having been kicked out of mainland Europe the war enters a new stage with no massive borders. The British and Americans will try to naval invade us and liberate France and for this we have started training several new garrisons. But since they have naval superiority we can do nothing to hurt them right now. So instead it's time for us to realize Kaiserin Victoria's goal of recreating the Holy Roman Empire. This includes striking down Switzerland and Italy and also allow us to attack Yugoslavia, Italy's only ally and return Macedonia to Bulgaria and Vojvodina to Hungary. However, we started with the neutral nation of Switzerland. We sent an ultimatum to them demanding complete annexation but expecting nothing to come out of it we had already expanded our Alpenjägers and prepared our tank force in the west of the country. However, in a complete turn of events the Swiss Federal Assembly saw no point in fighting and accepted our terms. Their generals such as Henri Guisson even joined our army to aid in the restoration of the HRE. So we can now prepare prepare to attack Italy, the traitors in World War I and occupier of several German and HRE lands. While the largest front is against Yugoslavia, we will focus most of our elite units on Italy itself. Our tanks will be split between a Piedmont offensive and an offensive into Tyrol and Venice, while our mountaineers will move from Ticino down south to Milano and hopefully Genoa. After preparing for 35 days we were ready to cross the border into Italy. Despite them having trouble kicking out the allies from Nice and Istria they had gathered a surprising amount of defenses. But this didn't stop us, we launched all our offensives both in Italy and Yugoslavia. The two in the the west went the best, with our mountaineers breaking into Italy from Ticino and our tanks capturing Nice and continuing eastwards. Soon our mountaineers had marched into Milano and were quickly moving towards Genoa. As they arrived all the Italian divisions in the Alps had been encircled and could be captured. Meanwhile in the east most of Yugoslavia had been captured and Tyrol was once again ours. As we started to enter Venice the news of Mussolini's deposal reached us, but this was short lived. After only a week he was back and the government which had deposed him fled to the south with much of the military. This government backed by the king decided to join us in the fight against Mussolini. About five days after that Yugoslavia surrendered and we continued our offensives in Italy. They had no divisions protecting Tuscany so two of our divisions could slip past and capture Florence and continue south. Soon we had reached Rome which was completely unprotected allowing us to go for Napoli. Sadly the allies arrived first but with all major cities captured the Italians surrendered. After a chaotic peace deal dividing Italy and Yugoslavia with the allies Hungary and Bulgaria got their lands. We established a Yugoslavian puppet and annexed all the HRE's land in Italy except some occupied by the allies. The allies have also established their own Yugoslavian puppet state, but we will hopefully kick them out of Trieste and Dalmatia. And finally our Italian puppet government has been given all of southern Italy. We can now finally prepare for the rebirth of the HRE but it will take some time so while we wait we can clear up all allied holdings in Italy and Yugoslavia. We started in northern Italy where we managed to capture Bologna and encircle the British troops in the region. While they tried the sneaky naval invasion of Venice they too were captured. So we could now turn to Yugoslavia where our tanks were ready to kick the allies out. Despite some Americans entrenching themselves we easily broke through, captured Trieste and Rijeka and continued down south. Here resistance was a bit fiercer and we lost some battles but as more of our troops arrived from the north we eventually kicked them out of Zadar and Dalmatia and with the fall of Podgorica the allies are pushed out of Yugoslavia. However we have failed to secure southern Italy where the allies have entrenched themselves in the mountains and while Emmanuel III is holding in Sicily all our offensives to break this allied stronghold has failed. But instead of bashing our heads against the mountains we will move to Greece, the only allied nation which has captured core central powers territory.
But this will come to an end now. Our main army group, our tank force and our mountaineers are ready to capitulate the Greeks. Hopefully we will manage in less than 30 days so our troops can come home when the HRE is proclaimed. While most of our attacks weren't successful, only a single one needed to be. Since as we broke through north of Thessaloniki, we could flood the opening with infantry and tanks and soon all of Thrace was encircled. Thessaloniki was also captured and the road to central Greece was open. The allies failed to retreat from Macedonia and soon it was encircled as well. Two of our tank divisions even managed to reach the outskirts of Athens but had to stop due to bad supply. While more than half of Greece has been occupied and all encircled divisions have been captured, 30 days have gone by and we must look back to Germany. In an excellent speech, Kaiserin Victoria announced the resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire. This new empire is even stronger than the last, hosting the strongest army and the biggest industry in the world. So our Kaiserin's first goal has been a success, but her second of creating a colonial empire has yet to be realized. However, our high command has already set up a plan to completely surprise the Allies and seize Northern Africa. The first step, capturing Greece. We started by trying to clear up Epirus but got stopped after only capturing a single tile due to horrible supply. So instead we turned to the Peloponnese where their defenses were much weaker. But just as we started our offensive, something dramatically changed our plans. Turkey joined the Allies in the war against us. Our plan had been to fund Ottoman loyalists to get them on our side and then attack the Middle East with their help. However, it seems we are too late. Instead, we will have to go through all of Turkey to reach the Middle East and then Africa. So we moved our tanks as quickly as possible to Turkey, halting our Greek offensive for an indefinite time. We arrived as the Turks had only managed to capture Burgas and Alexandropolis and immediately began a counter-offensive. It went best in Burgas where we, with the help of Bulgar infantry, managed to cut off most Turkish forces from Istanbul. While we did lose the encirclement for a short while, we took it back and eliminated almost 100,000 allied forces. So we can now assault Istanbul and continue into Asia. We've done it, the allied army in Africa and the Middle East have been completely destroyed and the Suez Canal has been seized. While Greece has been liberated and the allies have created a foothold in Antalya, all we need is to capture Gibraltar and Casablanca to cut off all allied supply routes from the Mediterranean Sea. These two cities might seem far away, but with no allied divisions in Egypt it can't take that long to drive through Libya and Algeria. And we have already started to convince Franco to join us so he can take back Gibraltar. And we were right about how fast the offensives in North America would go. Tobruk, Benghazi and Tripoli were all captured despite Allied resistance. So we can now move into the French North African colonies. The first supply hub in the city of Sfax was captured rather quickly and would serve as the stepping stone to capture the rest of Tunisia. After that we arrived all the way to the outskirts of Algeria before we got completely stopped. 
This means it's time to play our trump card, inviting the Spanish into the Central Powers. Franco has been a bit nervous but promising him several new colonies and with the whole new tank army ready to help him he has agreed to join the war. Totally unbeknownst to the Allies our tanks had already entered Spain before they joined the war. So we could cross to Morocco and attack Gibraltar at the first hours of the war. While the Allies managed to capture Melilla our tanks managed to land in Sueta safely and start to drive towards Casablanca. This offensive was such a complete surprise to the Allies that it didn't take long for the city to be captured and the Mediterranean Sea to finally be isolated and all British and American forces technically encircled. We started by dealing with French Algeria. Since Algiers was mostly defended by Americans with little supply we managed to capture the important city and force the French to retreat their supply capital to Ajaico only making the supply situation in Algeria worse. Soon we had also captured Oran, the last of their ports and encircled more than half a million men. Next up southern Italy, here the Brits and Americans had already started to feel the lack of supply and after a long battle in the mountains we managed to encircle more than 100,000 troops but this was nothing compared to the encirclement we managed to close by capturing Taranto and cutting off Campania from Calabria. After that we turned to Turkey and the small allied foothold in Antalya and Rhodes. Despite having a whole tank army and mountaineers trying to break through, the Allies had fortified the region so heavily we couldn't break them. So we turned to Greece to try to capitulate them again. It went just as last time. We broke through and captured most central territories but got stopped due to bad supply. So to fix this we started building ports to serve as supply hubs. It will take some time but while we wait I can talk about our next goal. It is to destroy the Soviet Union. We have already started to prepare a collaboration government and while we have new modern tanks to aid us it won't be easy. While it won't directly help our war against the Allies if we succeed and spread our empire all the way to Asia, it would force the Allies to the negotiation table. Especially since we have started to bomb London and the west coast with our new rockets. But back to Greece now, with supply established we could capture the Peloponnese Peninsula rather quickly and turn to Athens. At first it looked like we wouldn't win but as some of their troops reached low organization and started to retreat. The battle turned to our side until we finally entered the city. From there we captured another city but they still didn't surrender. We had to turn to the northeast and capture Ionina and Corfu first. So they now finally surrendered and we can turn away our troops from the Mediterranean and focus on the Soviet Union. Almost all our infantry divisions were sent to the front, more than 200, together with all our tanks. But we can't forget about our second front, the one in eastern Turkey. This mountainous area is the perfect place for our mountaineers. They will be supported by some infantry and if supply allows it they will try to capture the important oil fields in the Caucasus. And finally our air force which has grown quite large has been sent to the east to secure the air above our troops. So we declared war. We started in the south where they had the least amount of defenses. While they surprisingly managed to stop off a majority of our attacks since they didn't have any defense in depth we only had to break through in some tiles. Our tanks did it both in the northern and the southern part of our offensive allowing us to create a pincer movement and encircle more than 100,000 Soviet troops. So after about 10 days we had captured most of Romania and destroyed the southern Soviet defenses. But instead of continuing here we turned to the north. They had been forced to relocate troops to the south so we broke through almost immediately and managed to capture our first major Soviet city, Minsk. From the city we decided to continue towards Vitebsk as well as trying to encircle a massive part of its defenders. Sadly they managed to retreat to the city before we arrived and we failed both our objectives. However we now have an opportunity of a massive encirclement. If the southern and the northern forces unite in Minsk all of eastern Poland would be cut off. So it's time to deploy our new modern tanks for the first time and secure this encirclement. 
We attacked simultaneously in the north and the south with infantry and tanks. Despite having to cross a river, our modern tanks succeeded and drove quickly towards Kiev. As we arrived, the city was completely isolated, meaning we could even cross the Denerp without any difficulties. However, as we expected, our northern attacks didn't go as well due to a combination of marshes and Soviet resistance. But our brilliant field marshal adapted to this reality and managed to cross over to Gommel and move south from there. So, after only a few days of fighting, our two armies united in Chernigov and more than 100, maybe even 200 Soviet divisions were now encircled. It took a long time to clear the encirclement, but they had no chance to save any troops. And as we had captured or killed them all, the Soviet casualties were over 4 million already. While they won't have a hard time to replace them, it will take valuable time which they don't have. In some areas they only have two divisions per tile which we can fully exploit. And that we did. In the south we encircled Odessa, opening the way to Sevastopol. In the middle our tanks captured Smolensk, allowing us to assault Moscow in the future. And finally in the north our tanks entered and capitulated the Estonian independent SSR. From there we continued to Leningrad, here the Soviet defenses were also lacking and our first tank army managed to capture the city named after Lenin. As we did, the Finnish army started what they would call as the continuation war, attacking the Soviets with the goal of retaking their lost lands. Together with them we are sure to crush the Soviets, since with our collaboration government the Soviets only have to lose 58% of their victory points, and we are already 47% there, so let's make it 100. <laughs> We have done it, Stalin has realized that he can't do anything to stop us, and with the Allies also moving west from Vladivostok he has finally surrendered. After about a week we had drawn the new Russian borders and established several new governments. Firstly, the Livonian Kingdom got all of the Baltics and Belarusia, Ukraine was established with Eastern Poland and Western Romania. Interestingly, Kaiserin Victoria decided to annex the Crimean Peninsula. In the Caucasus and the Steppes, we formed a super confederation of all different ethnicities. North of them, a small Volga German state was established, and east of them is a new Kazakh nation. Finally, a Russian collaboration government got to keep Moscow and Victoriagrad, but not Siberia since there the Americans have formed their own Russian government. We will immediately send some infantry to hold this front, even if it doesn't really matter. What matters, however, is that the Allies have naval invaded France. Luckily, we could contain them, but if we want to be able to force them to sign a peace agreement with us, we will have to push them out completely. So, we sent our tanks as well as our infantry to France. With our speedy railway system, it didn't take long for them to arrive and we immediately started with the northern invasion. We broke the American cipher to help us and with probably the highest concentration of tanks ever seen, we actually broke through and split their forces in two. Both of the pockets were cleared out and we moved to the southern invasion. This time we broke the British cipher and attacked with an even bigger amount of tanks. And it showed since as we broke through we could drive to Le Havre 
Havre uncontested and even overrun some of their troops. Dieppe and the rest of their troops were now isolated and both were captured rather quickly. So France is safe and we sent a request of a ceasefire and peace talks to the British, threatening that if they didn't accept we would leverage our much larger industry to construct the biggest fleet mankind had ever seen, as well as to deploy a new kind of bomb on London. And of course they had no choice but to accept. After about a month of peace talks we finally came to an agreement. We got to keep all our conquered lands except Greece and Turkey which will lose some territories and be forced to leave the allies. There were also some border changes among ourselves. We gave away Poland to the Livonian Kingdom so they can form the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and Spain got all of Basque as well as Algeria. But to get the allies to accept this peace deal we had to promise to not expand our navy anymore and leave British and American interests in Asia alone. So Kaiser in Victoria has succeeded, the Holy Roman Empire is larger than ever before and we have secured colonies for ourselves. Additionally our alliance spans from the cold northern states of Russia to the barren desert of western Sahara. We really are the central powers of the world. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.